They ate voraciously as Neil, sandwich in hand, stood bowed and jumping before the big phonograph, listening to a wild bop record I just bought called The Hunt with Dexter Gordon and Wardell Gray, blowing their tops before a screaming audience that gave the record fantastic frenzy volume. The Southern folk looked at one another and shook their heads in awe. What kind of friends does Jack have anyway, they asked my sister. She was stumped for an answer. Southerners don't like madness in the least bit, not Neil's kind. He paid absolutely no attention to them. The madness of Neil had bloomed into a weird flower. I didn't realize this till he and I and Luann and Hinkle left the house for a brief spin in the Hudson when for the first time we were alone and we could talk about anything we wanted. Neil grabbed the wheel, shifted to second, mused a minute, rolling. Suddenly seemed to decide something and shot the car full jet down the road in a fury of decision. All right now, children, he said, rubbing his nose and bending down to feel the emergency and pulling cigarettes out of the compartment and swaying back and forth as he did these things and drove. The time has come for us to decide what we're going to do for the next week. Crucial, 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 uh-huh. He dodged a mule wagon. In it sat an old Negro plodding along. Yes, said Neil. Yes, dig him. Now consider his soul. Stop a while and consider and he slowed down the car for all of us to turn and look at the old jazz bow mooning and moaning along. Oh yes, dig him sweet. Now there's thoughts in that mind that I would give my last arm to know. Go climb in there, find out just what he's pondering about this year's turnip greens and ham. Jack, you don't know it, but once I lived with a farmer in Arkansas for a whole year when I was 11, I had awful chores. I had to skin a dead horse once. And I haven't been to Arkansas since Christmas, 1943, exactly six years ago when Ben Gowan and I were chased by a man with a gun who owned the gun we were trying to steal. I say this all uh, to show you that of the South I can speak. I've known. I mean, I dig the South. I know it in and out. I've dug your letters to me about it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He said, trailing off and stopping altogether and suddenly jumping back to 70 and hunching over the wheel to go. He stared doggedly ahead. Luann was smiling serenely. This was the new and complete Neil, grown to maturity. I could see that Luann and Hinkle had been digging up these past several days with amazed love. And I said to myself, my God, he's changed. Fury spat out of his eyes when he told of things he hated. Great glows of joy replaced this when he suddenly got happy. Every muscle twitched to live and go. Oh, man, the things I could tell you, he said, poking me. Oh, man, we must absolutely find the time. What's happened to Alan? We all got to get to see Alan, darlings. First thing tomorrow. Now, Luann, we're getting uh, some bread and, and meat to make lunch for New York. How much money do you have, Jack? We'll put everything in the back seat. Mrs. K's furniture, and all of us will sit up front cuddly and close to tell stories as we zoom to New York. Luann Honeycutt, you sit next to me, Jack next, then out the window, Big Al to cut off the drafts whereby he comes into using the robe this time, and then we'll go off to the sweet life because now is the time. We all know the time. He rubbed his jaw furiously. He swung the car. He passed three trucks. He roared into downtown Rocky Mountain looking in every direction and seeing everything in an arc of 180 degrees around his eyeballs without moving his head. Bang, he found a parking space in no time and we were parked.